why zinc deficiency causes resistance to thyroid hormone, sex hormones, and vitamins A and D. Hi, I'm Chris Masterjohn, and I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor, and nothing contained in this episode may be construed as medical or nutritional advice of any kind or a substitute, therefore. This episode is meant purely as scientific education. If you wish to act on any ideas presented in this episode, please consult your physician first and never take anything herein as a reason to contradict medical advice. With that said, enjoy the episode. Jay Anderson says, in your how to manage your zinc status video, you mentioned that a zinc deficiency can cause vitamin A, vitamin D, thyroid, and sex hormones to be ineffective. Why is this? I keep hearing that the body needs time to become fat adapted does it know how to burn fat right away? And then Jay has the fourth and fifth questions. So I'm guessing this is the third. He says, sorry for the format above. First question got glued to the second. The fat adapted question is separate. Oh, okay. So um, Jay, I'm going to answer your first question. And then if there's time, and I think there will be, because there's a fewer people in attendance today than in, la- than in last uh, at AMA, I will uh, come back to your other question. So the question about, um, why can zinc deficiency cause vitamin A, vitamin D, thyroid, and sex hormones to be ineffective? The answer to that is because the because uh, all of those things carry out their gene expression function by binding to nuclear receptors, and all of the nuclear receptors bind to DNA using zinc finger motifs. Zinc finger motif means that in the uh, in the nuclear receptor, there's a zinc ion that coordinates the primary structure of the protein, which is a long string of amino acids, into a finger shape. And then that finger shape, you know, just as if, just as you can interlock your two hands by clasping your fingers together, so these finger shapes lock together with DNA by clasping the finger shapes together. And if you don't have zinc, you don't have the finger shape. And if you don't have the finger shape, you Um, you can't bind, the receptor can't bind to the DNA. Now that's, that's based on uh, mechanistic understanding. Some people will call that mechanistic speculation and say that it's lower evidence than some of the other things. But, um, and I agree with that, but I, but I, I wouldn't dismiss it because really no one thinks about hormone insensitivity, uh, as much at all, and certainly as relates to nutrition. Um, And so I have seen people who something changes in their diet and the dose, not only the dose of a hormone that they need changes, and I'm not the one managing this. I'm not a doctor. I don't prescribe hormones, but I just, you know, they tell me about their experience. Um, And so I've had consulting clients who have described these things, you know, in the years and sometimes decades before, um, they became my client, they had to not only adjust the dose of their hormones, but they also had to adjust the blood levels that that could be used as an indicator of the amount of hormone because uh, their sensitivity to the hormone changed. And there's not really many people talking about how nutrition can potentially impact hormone sensitivity. And to know these things, I think is super valuable as a potential explanation when there are no other potential explanations. And so, um, If your zinc status is poor, you may not, you know, you may get the right blood levels of the hormone, but you may not get the physiological effect you expect. And hey, if your plasma zinc is low and you fix the plasma zinc and you get the physiological effect of the hormone, that's pretty nice to know that information. So that's why I I put that kind of stuff in the cheat sheet. All right. Thank you, Jay, for your question. This episode was part of a Q&A for members of the CMJ Masterpass, a buyer's club with exclusive and massive discounts on your favorite premium foods and health products, including pasture-raised and wild meat and seafood, supplements, sleep accessories, water filters, phototherapy devices, and much more. As a bonus, you also get to participate in monthly private Zoom Q&As with me. You can join the Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code Q&A, spelled out as Q-A-N-D-A, Q&A, for a 10% lifetime discount. From now through February or March, whatever it takes to get it done, I will be working full-time on finishing my Vitamins and Minerals 101 book, 
while reserving a portion of my time for my consulting clients. You can pre-order my book at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash book. In my consulting, I am neither a medical practitioner nor a coach. I serve as your data analyst and your strategist. I teach you scientific principles of health and wellness, help you analyze your data, and help brainstorm actionable strategies. You can sign up for a consultation at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash consultations. I will try to respond to comments here when I can, but my presence will be intermittent while I'm finishing my book. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next episode.